Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 7th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery, and you can see that line of thunderstorms here from Moses Lake down towards the Tri-Cities, Wenatchee, Lake Chelan, getting some thunderstorm activity this morning across northeast Washington, up into BC here. Some light precip for western Washington here, and you can kind of see the smoke working its way around the area here. I heard some reports that there was some smoke down towards the surface here across areas north of Seattle. I didn't smell anything out there yesterday, but I don't doubt that at all with the sourdough fire and some fires across BC going in there. It makes sense. This is looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see Alaska, Washington, California. There's the Hawaiian Islands here. You can clearly see the system moving into the Gulf of Alaska here. And that's going to be our next weather maker. And it's going to cool us down, keep us seasonably cool here across the Pacific Northwest for the next few days before the next ridge starts to build over the area. Gaining confidence in that, we will take a detailed look at it. Looking down across the tropics, you can see Hurricane Dora moving south of the Hawaiian Islands. No threat to them right now. Now, later in the season, though, some of these systems can make abrupt turns northward. You might remember Hurricane Aniki in 1992. If not, Google it and check out the track on that. But really no threat right now at all. Just kind of an interesting look here at the mid-level water vapor loop. Looking back at home, Spokane, Washington, you got some storms out there today. You've got some nice lightning going on across places that usually don't get it during the summertime. Some of that lightning can be deadly, so watch out if you hear thunder out there this morning and in through the early and later afternoon hours. Heavy downpours, occasional lightning, and this is really going to be a threat for today. And then the system starts to kick out as we go through tomorrow. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail here in a moment. Check out National Weather Service Portland. They're starting to bump up their odds for 100 plus degree days here as we go through mid-August. You can see you're getting up towards 50-50 chance here. So we'll see how this goes. We've got a few more days to watch us. Over the next two, three days here, we're really going to gain some confidence on just what will unfold here. And you can see this was issued this morning here. This is day one excessive rainfall outlook. You can see across northeast Washington, Idaho Panhandle. You do have that slight all the way up into the North Cascades there with some of this thunderstorm activity underneath the stronger storms. And of course, this would extend into British Columbia as well. Day two, you can see that activity going to be kicking off to the east. No threat here across Pacific Northwest. If you guys want a nice effect, affordable home weather station to record all this weather. This uh, station here, the From Tempest Weather Flow, stores all the data for you in the app, in the cloud for you, and you can access it anytime you want. It's all solar-powered wireless. Save 10% by clicking on the link down below. You can see the map. You can scroll all over the world and click other people's individual stations, or you can keep your information private as well. Highly recommend that station. Looking at SeaTac yesterday, we tried to get up towards average. We broke out that sun during the afternoon hours. We didn't get any precip there there officially. <clears throat> but for this morning, uh, I think we might have tipped the bucket here. I know it was raining a little bit, so we'll see how that goes tomorrow. But you can see we didn't quite make it to average at SeaTac there, but we are definitely going to warm up here as we go through mid-August. You can clearly see we still get pretty good heat waves this time of year. Like in 2010, we had back-to-back 95-plus -back days there at SeaTac. In 2020, you might remember that. We had some thunderstorm activity there with that 98-degree day on August 16th. Here we go with the European last night's run. A little bit of a ridge here, kind of across Pacific Northwest. We did have some warm days here at the beginning of August. Then we had that low pressure system kind of over the top of us. And that's finally kicking out of our region. But as you saw in the middle of a water vapor loop, that next system is on its way towards British Columbia and Western Washington. That will swing through, keep the onshore flow going. But then you can clearly see the ridge start to build here as we get towards next weekend coming up. So we'll be watching that one closely over the next couple of days. More on that here in a moment. Here we go with Quileute Airport shows that trough swinging through and then the potential ridge building here as we get towards next Saturday and Sunday coming up. We'll be watching this closely over the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Here we go with 500 millibar heights. This is Washington, Alaska there. This is the system swinging through as we go through Tuesday and Wednesday and then you'll see the ridge building back behind that here and you can see the big trough out over the Aleutian Islands in the Pacific Ocean helping to amplify this ridge over the area. Just the strength of this ridge right now is still in some quite Question, of course, that's natural for this kind of time frame here. We're still looking at, you know, five plus days out at this point. This is looking at the six hour precipitation on the European. Seems to be handling this pretty well with that thunderstorm activity across eastern Washington. And this is really rare for summertime across portions of eastern Washington, Grants County out there, Moses Lake. 
up towards Wenatchee, getting that thunderstorm activity. But you can see it push off. By the time you get to tonight, some of the Blue Mountains, Idaho, that activity pushes off to the east. And then quickly, this next system starts to roll through here. But you can see it's not a big precip maker. If we're lucky, we'll squeeze a few hundreds out for <clears throat> Seattle and Portland here, maybe some of the coastal areas. Better chances as you go north through British Columbia, some of the North Cascades as well. And there we go with that system swinging through. You might ring some... A couple tenths of an inch out across some of the Cascades as well, mainly central and north. And then you can see we start to dry out as we go through the extended. Now, this is looking at the, the herd. This is a short-term forecast here. You can see some of this thunderstorm activity. Didn't do too bad with picking up on some of this here this morning across eastern Washington. Again, down towards the Tri-Cities here. In towards the Blue Mountains as you go through the afternoon today and swinging across the Idaho and Oregon border. And then finally out of the region here. This model goes out 48 hours every six hours. And I wouldn't worry about this out here. I don't expect lightning here all the way into maybe up towards Vancouver Island. But I'm not expecting anything for the Washington, Oregon coast at this time. Time. We can check that again tomorrow morning as well. This is total precipitation on the European. You can see maybe another couple hundredths of an inch here squeezing out this morning across western Washington, but better amounts. Of course, eastern Washington, Blue Mountains there, the European like in Idaho as well, the higher terrain. And then you can clearly see our system. Pretty good rainmaker there north of Vancouver Island along the coastal areas. Haida Gwaii up here, north Vancouver Island. It starts to swing through. And again, we'll be lucky if we squeeze out a few hundredths of an inch or a tenth of an inch across some portions of western Washington at least the lower elevations here as well. But anyway, it will keep us cool here for at least a few days before we start to bounce back again this weekend. <clears throat> Here you can see Portland, Oregon. Check out some of these highs forecast to be mid and upper 90s. You might push 100 degrees on one of these days coming up here. We'll be watching that closely, and you can clearly see the cool and seasonable temperatures in the meantime there. So enjoy this right here before we warm up. Tillamook, Oregon, again, the potential all the way up to the Oregon coast for some above average temperatures here does exist. Hoakley and Washington, similar thing here, but you can see the ensembles are still kind of all over the place by the time you get towards Sunday, Monday, Tuesday coming up. Seattle Metro, same thing here. Big swings and uh, differences in some of the ensemble members on the European here also, but it looks like we are going to be warming up here <clears throat> as we start to go into this weekend and early next week. Spokane, something similar here. You can see that upper level low, keeping things seasonably cool here until that ridge starts to build. This is SeaTac. So you can think the control run only shows, what, two, three hundredths of an inch here as the system starts to roll in here. Um, um, this is yeah, it's not looking like a big precipitation maker here as we go through a Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. I was hoping one of these ensembles was going to be right this morning, but yeah, looks like not a lot of precip here, but you will notice that we are definitely not going to be too warm here, at least through the midweek period. Then you can kind of see we dry out as we go through the weekend. This is Bellingham, Washington here as well. You can see the control kind of calling for a tenth of an inch here coming up. Some of the ensembles are a bit higher here, and of course the chances are better the further you go north from Seattle. This is the 6 to 10 day. You can clearly see the heat wave that we've been talking about for several days now, all the way through August 16th and August 20th here as well. Above average possibilities here along a lot of the West Coast. This is that uh, 6 to 10 day probability for precipitation here. And you can see, enjoy what little precip we're getting here as we go through midweek because, yeah, we're going to shut things down here for a bit with that ridge. And, uh, you know, that upper level low, not a bad thing here, kind of suppressing fire danger here east of the mountains. But, of course, we're going to bounce back and start to deal with that again as we move towards the weekend. And I talked about this yesterday. This is the new forecast from the European issued August 1st. And 1.5 about right here would uh, make uh, moderate El Nino here. And this can have big impacts here in the Pacific Northwest. If you've been watching the channel, you can see some of my educational videos on El Nino. But it tends to bring much warmer um, early portions of the new year. So as we go on in through late winter and early spring, we tend to be much warmer than we would be in La Nina years across Pacific Northwest. So it'll be interesting to see if that again plays out. I have a hunch that it will, and you can see we are probably headed towards strong El Nino territory coming up here as we go through the fall. And this is kind of a running total here. You can see South America, there's the Maritime Continent, there's Africa all the way over here. So you can see the really warm water along the coast of South America. This would be where the uh, El Nino region is right here across the equatorial Pacific. And you can kind of see as we went from La Nina to neutral and then into El Nino conditions. So if we scroll through here, we're about July 12th here. 
There's July 20th. You can kind of see the gradual warm up occurring across some of the equatorial Pacific there and the continued warmth right along the coastline of South America there. So the El Nino continues to develop. It's been a little bit slow here, but I'm wondering if it's going to go through a rapid warming phase here in the next couple of months as some of what the, some of what the models are showing there. So we'll be watching that closely. This is looking at <clears throat> something you're probably hearing some chatter about here as well. This is a sea surface temperature anomaly right off our coastline here. And I'm not a marine biologist here, but I know this is not a good thing because if you look at this, this is just kind of abnormal and it can affect marine life. You know, things that that live here off the Pacific Ocean obviously are used to a certain temperature here. So when you really exceed that, you can kill off marine life and do all kinds of crazy stuff, you know? So you might look at this and go, oh, this is not too bad. That's not, the water isn't too warm, but everything that lives there is used to much cooler water here. So just kind of remember that when you talk about these sea surface temperature maps here, yeah, kind of interesting stuff here. Hopefully that blob doesn't hang out for too long off our West coast, but we'll see how that trends over the next few months or so. But anyway, yeah, watch out there across Eastern water. Washington, you guys are probably enjoying, or at least the weather lovers are probably enjoying some of those lightning strikes and thunderstorm activity out there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to bring a system through here. We're going to clean up the air for a lot of portions as well. I mean, it's going to push a lot of smoke off to the east here, but Western Washington, Western Oregon, the coastal areas are really going to clean out their air here as we swing the system through here as we go through midweek. And then that ridge is going to build. Warm temperatures probably coming after that, but it is summertime, right? So got to expect it for the most part. But anyway, yeah, leave some comments below below like click subscribe and we'll do this again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then